You want to get a check on your forecast in Florence. You can see strong category three hurricanes slowly getting closer and closer to the Carolina coast. Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here with the very latest. Brad. Yeah, the latest track continues to bring it right up to the coast here before it kind of stalls out as we go towards Thursday night into Friday. Now landfall might not actually happen until Saturday morning. That's a distinct possibility if it hovers just offshore because it looks like by Saturday afternoon, two o'clock, it would be moving into the Myrtle Beach area, but it could clip uh, areas out here right around the Wilmington area. So it could make two landfalls or it could wait and be out here because remember that it's in the cone somewhere. We always have these icons on here. I take the line off because the storm could be anywhere in this cone. So when you see shifts in the track, it's the center line that shifts, but usually it ends up being somewhere within the cone that was previously issued. And remember, that's the same case as it moves west. The cone winds out because the uncertainty grows as it moves off to the west. But it is going to be a weaker system because of that stall. It's going to allow it to really wind down its winds. Unfortunately, that doesn't do anything for the rain. Now, I mentioned going into the break that the storm is moving a little bit more north than west now, which is a little bit north of the actual track I just showed you. So that's a trend to watch. Now, while that in the long term, that may not be a big deal. That could bring the center closer to Charlotte, which would just mean worse winds and rain possible with the center if it stalls near the coast. The impacts for Charlotte, our biggest concern by far is flooding, and I can't emphasize this enough. You need to be ready and have a plan. If you're in a floodplain or you don't even know if you're in a flood plane check if you're near a creek or stream if you've ever had flooding in your yard or during one of those big rainstorms and you've had that in the past you can count on it that's going to happen again maybe times 10 so just plan ahead right now that if we get into these heavy rain bands the potential for flooding at your home is going to be very high so have a plan where am i going to go what's the highest place how am i going to get out of my house does everyone in my house know where to go these are the kind of planning things you should be doing now before the storm hits now winds notice not that big of a deal in the charlotte area this this is a much bigger deal on the coast. The winds will be winding down as the storm sits there and kind of stalls and weakens. Eventually it moves through central South Carolina. Our winds never really get much above 30 miles an hour, so the wind threat isn't huge. It's going to be there combined with the wet soil that's going to bring the trees down. Remember, trees around here do not do well in any kind of rainy weather when there's just a little bit of wind. As far as the wind impacts, the biggest impacts will be off to our south and our east. I don't think we'll see much in the way of damage from the winds themselves. So the timing of all this, this is my number one question I get online. Thursday, no issues. Friday, pretty much no issues. Low end threat, maybe for some wind or a few power outages out east. But Saturday into Sunday, notice how the colors ramp up, especially for flash flooding. So Saturday into Sunday, this is our biggest threat. This will go into Monday and Tuesday. Notice the winds won't be an issue by then. It's all going to be about the rain. Now the power outages, it's not because of the wind, it's because of that rain saturating the ground. Trees will be coming down, knocking down a power line. That's my issue. So check out these future cast rainfall totals. I've had to keep adjusting my color contours because they're so far up there. They're off the charts. This is a wider view. I'm going to show you a close in view here. We're going to zoom in right into our viewing area and I'll show you some of these numbers because this is the potential rainfall we could see between now and Tuesday. Every single location is between five and 11 inches of rain in our viewing area. And depending on where the track sets up, there might be an area of heavier rain that moves through. So just think about this much rain falling in about a four, four and a half day period, maybe three days in some locations, the amount of potential for flooding in your area, especially in the mountains and foothills. No flood watch yet. I'm waiting to see if this flood watch, there's one off to the east. We will likely see some flood watches issued for our area. So here's my bottom line impacts. Flooding rain, seven to 10 inches. Some amounts could be higher, some could be a little bit lower. Down trees are number two impact. Uh, impact. I'm worried about trees coming down because of the wet soil. And number three, which we really haven't talked a lot about, it's a tornado threat. With that track to our south and to our west, that puts us on the right side or the strongest side of the circulation, which is typically where tornadoes form. We'll have to watch that, but that'll be a day by day kind of setup. So tonight, Really got scattered showers out there tonight. Most of this not associated with Florence yet, but boy, does it feel tropical out there with those temperatures around 70 degrees. The seven day forecast will show you the impacts of Florence moving in Friday night into Saturday and Sunday. The weekend, our biggest impacts right through Monday. We'll have more Florence coverage coming up right after the break.